everybody and welcome back to my channel my name is Laura and today we are going to do another pick a card reading asking what's gonna happen the next time you see your person you clicked on this video for a reason you had someone in mind so keep that person in mind um, as we go over the stone selections and you know get into your reading because it's really we're gonna tune into that person and what's gonna happen the next time you see them for those of you who are subscribed to me first off y'all are the real ones everyone who's not subscribed who's watching this what are you doing but you might notice that my appearance looks slightly different. I bleached the underside of my hair really badly. Um, <laughs> it's very orange, but that was expected because of years of just dying and bleaching my hair. And then this is black and then I got a pure thing. So, you know, I don't know what it is about Virgo season. It just hit me and I'm like, all right, we gotta like up the appearance game, you know? Not like up the appearance game, but like, I feel like Virgo season really has you doing self care and, you know, making changes, you know, focusing on your beauty and your organization and work and all that good stuff. So uh, that's how Virgo season's affecting me. How about you? Leave it in the comment section. What have you been doing this Virgo season? And what are the energies like for you? Like what's going on in your life? I'd love to know. Okay, so take a moment to think of the person that you are inquiring about and the next time you see them, really envision them in your mind or you can even ask your spirit guides or your higher self what's gonna go down the next time you see them. But the thing that's important here is just setting the intention for the reading. Consciously, you can say it out loud. What is going to happen the next time I see this person? And really ground yourself with one person because sometimes when we go into these readings, you might be thinking about a person, but then another person comes to mind during the reading. It could just get really confusing so it's really good to ground your intention in physical words okay and once you've done so take a look at all of these rocks and see whichever one calls out to you the most we have group number one with the black obsidian we have this i know nothing about rocks so don't even ask me what these are this one i found in maine and it was just there on a lake and it really i was like honing in on it and then we have this rock right here i forget where i found this i'm gonna have to think about it where did i find this at i think in washington and then this one uh the atlantic ocean gave me okay <laughs> so there we have it just four random stones select whichever one you feel most drawn to and let's see what's gonna happen the next time you see your person okay so group number one you guys selected the uh, what is it called what is it called why can't i remember what it's called you remember what it's called so we have a few things going on over here. This is one person, this is another person. So if you identify very strongly with this side um, and you feel like this side is your partner or whoever you're gonna see next, whoever you have in mind, then follow that intuition. If you see yourself a little bit in both of the piles, that just shows that you and your person um, are kind of like mirroring each other at this time. Um, so that's normal as well. So just take whatever size res whatever side resonates with you and your other person, or if it's like kind of a mishmash of your energy that's acceptable too. Now these cards in the center are going to represent um, just the event of the next time you see them in general and the shared energies, okay? So let's dive right into it. Person number one is being represented by the unicorn. A nice, nice, very majestic, magical creature over here. Um, their chakra that's going to be most in play during the next time you s they you guys blink up whatever is impasse okay this is um the sacral chakra has to do with kind of uh not really knowing where things are heading next you know what i mean it's like do i move forward do i stay where i am it's just kind of this uh not like stagnant energy just like a, do i really do i move forward you know an impasse is like how do we move forward really so whoever this person is in the connection they don't know how to move forward and that's a very important thing we're seeing here their energy is being represented by action interesting how it's impasse and then action right next to each other so i feel like they're trying this could be you or them i'm just gonna say they're to make it simple um the unicorn person is trying to take some form of action the next time y'all link up whether that's you or them to get out of this impasse that's what i'm really seeing there let's see um and we'll look into the romance cards later let's see uh, this other person this is person number two and they're being represented by the camel uh the camel has a lot of emotional resilience you know this is an independent person um perhaps they're not used to i don't want to say they're not used to talking i just want to say they're used to being on their own they're a comfortable being on their own they're comfortable with their alone time people who are represented by the camel um, probably have gone a long time in their life 
on their own. So, um, you know, they're, they're just comfortable with how things are moving forward. That's what I want to say. They're being represented by joy. I mean, their chakra that's most open is the solar plexus here. This is just straight up joy, straight up love, happiness, um, and all that good stuff. So if you feel like you're more the unicorn in this connection, this mystical, magical, um, intuitive person who's super creative, um, and really just rare to come by, and you're kind of in this impasse where you don't know where this connection is going, and you want to take some form of action the next time you meet up so you have more direction as to where things are going and you aren't sure about the camel person in this connection um, because they come across as very independent or they come across as like just not moving forward that quickly or maybe they're just chill with everything you know go with the flow type of people maybe they're not um, very sorry for the dog barking not very um, taking the initiative in this connection um, know that this person is totally happy with you and when you spend time together okay this person is just gonna be totally add joy um, the next time you see them they're gonna be happy to see you they you know this is the feeling of love joy dancing I mean all that good stuff that dog really I swear to God <laughs> And then the camel person's energy here is the angel of strength. And we have more yellow showing up. Uh, yellow is, again, the color of the solar plexus. This is confidence. This is um, emotional vulnerability as well. So this is a really good sign that the next time you guys hang out, whoever this camel person is, whether it's you or them, um, are going to have a fun time. So if you resonate more with this camel, this independence, this um, emotional energy you know camels hold a lot of water within them so the camel person is low-key very emotional but they're very cool on the surface you know what i mean so this could be you like low-key you have a whole bunch of feelings here <laughs> but you're keeping it cool calm collected on the surface or they're keeping it cool calm collected on the surface um and this is a very i want to say like emotionally mature type of energy where it's just like yeah they hold a bunch of watery emotions within them but you know they're keeping it cool on the surface level to just see where things go naturally or to make sure everything remains grounded and you know the camel reserves a lot of that water for times where it's needed so it's almost like the camel person's trying to pace this connection and they're enjoying the process very patiently um and they're extremely emotionally intelligent with the angel of strength here with the camel this person's extremely emotionally intelligent not to say that the unicorn is not emotionally intelligent i just feel like this unicorn person is much more intuitive spiritual creative um very mystical like almost like a magical energy and aura about them um and they're usually very intuitive about things so if this is you, uh, you know, you could be a very intuitive um, person. Maybe you're a psychic like me, or you're just into spirituality, um, astrology, things like that. And you get a grasp of people's feelings very easily. And I feel like you might be, if you're this person, you might be a little bit more forward moving uh, or quicker to move forward in connections um, because you're able to read into a person's energy and you might see like, oh, this person's perfect for me or whatever. Um, and you just want to have things move forward quicker rather than later because you don't want your time wasted. You know what I mean? If that's you, if it's the other person, then that's probably what they're feeling here. Um, so, so yeah. What I really like about this, if we notice, both of these spirit animals are looking in the same direction and it's almost like you and whoever you're asking about want the same thing out of this. You want to move in the same direction, even if you don't openly talk about it just yet, okay? Um, so yeah, I, I feel like the next time you guys hang out, um, whoever's being represented by the unicorn, you might, if it's you or if it's them, they might say something or do something that kind of pushes this connection forward a little bit faster. And I have a feeling it's gonna be well received by the camel person um, who who's just happy to be here. <laughs> you know, the camel person's just happy to be here, just vibing. Um, and is very emotionally open um so yeah if you're this unicorn person and you want to have a conversation about like where things are headed or just get on the same page with the camel person know that it's probably going to be very well received um this camel person is very understanding and if you're the camel person just keep doing what you're doing um know that the unicorn person is probably trying to move things forward maybe a little bit quicker and they might have some fears surrounding that um or they might not i feel like the unicorn person may need this camel person to kind of um clarify their feelings and what they want in this connection does that make sense whereas the camel person you know yeah that would be cool but you know they're just glad to be here they're just happy to see where things go so let's see um Oh my god, every single dog on my block is barking right now. I'm gonna pause the video. Okay, they seem to stop barking. Um, fingers crossed. Um, but also, that could also be a sign. Um, the spirit of dogs 
are very loyal actually and kind of like you know man's best friend or whatever so that they have good energy um kind of showing up in the reading in that way um you know just bringing forward that dog spirit of loyalty and just kind-hearted nature that could be a sign that this is a really just kind-hearted uh connection where you don't have to fear um just being yourself um with the other person and just being open about your feelings with the other person you know what i mean like when you think of dogs or if anyone here has a dog um in their life it's like you could tell that dog anything you could be whoever you know you could be eating chips on the couch and looking a mess and that dog's still gonna love you you know what i mean <laughs> and perhaps that's how this connection is like and it might be new for some of you so you might not be aware of that or at least the unicorn person's not 100 percent um aware of that yet but i feel like this is a safe connection but let's see what the other cards have to say because maybe they'll disagree with me or what what have you um this is the next time you're seeing each other these cards and the energy the next time is <laughs> why am i not surprised fifth chakra archangel gabriel reversed yeah this is a closed throat chakra and you know what throat chakras are all about communication there you feel like you're not <laughs> sharing your true genuine feelings with this person just yet you know i feel like group number one you might have strong feelings for this other person that are not being voiced at this time and you know i, w I just want to say like that's okay i mean if you feel a little bit too scared to open up just yet or maybe not comfortable enough that's fine give it time um especially if you're the unicorn person because the camel person here is very patient and if you are the camel person um know that the unicorn person actually does like you a lot i feel and they're actually pretty in their head about you okay so you know the next time you see each other um there might be an urge to not share your feelings or emotions or communicate effectively um or maybe if you do try communicating it's just not perceived in the way you wanted it to be so i would say pay attention to that um before you hang out with this person the next time you might want to do like a throat chakra um cleansing or meditation to empower that chakra um you know you can go on youtube and look up like throat chakra reiki or throat chakra um frequencies and, or literally just visualize your throat chakra opening up um being cleared away from debris or you can literally ask archangel um gabriel who i've been working a lot he with working with heavily um this uh past couple of weeks so just ask archangel gabriel if you're into angels i think angels are the bomb.com regardless of whatever your religious or spiritual beliefs are you know they are not like a one religious belief system um type of entity so ask for help um opening up your throat chakra angels are really good at helping you with your chakras and with your energy if you only asked them you have to ask them for that help so i would definitely recommend um doing a throat chakra healing before you meet up with this person um then we have journey reversed interesting so usually upright this show is like kind of moving forward going on a journey with someone i i want to read from the book what this means um in reverse because to be honest i rarely pick this card in reverse so i just want to make sure um i know the meaning of and I got it down pat. So journey reversed. You may desire to move or just get away for a while, but the reverse of this card can indicate a delay or even a cancellation. Oh, okay. Okay. So maybe, maybe um, you've had some like delays in linking up with this person and hanging out, or maybe one of you guys had to cancel for whatever reason. And there might be some miscommunication around that or just not enough communication around that. Um, and I feel like this unicorn person, if that's the case, may be a little bit insecure about the connection because of the like weird delays or scheduling conflicts, um, with, you know, the camel person. I don't know why I did it in that way. I guess the camel person could also feel that way, but I don't know. I just felt, I just feel like the unicorn person in this connection is feeling a little bit insecure but not for any bad reason i just feel like this unicorn person needs more validation needs more confirmation of the camel person's feelings which are very clearly there okay very clearly there um and that's totally fair to ask for if you feel like you're the unicorn person um there definitely needs to be more communication in this connection and i do feel like that may come in time okay i just especially if this is a new person in your life um it takes time to really develop um, a communication style that works for both people so be patient with that okay 
Something could be even standing in your way, or perhaps the line of communication may get crossed. Yeah, that's what the book literally says. Don't let uh, the potential changes upset you. Refocus your energy and be flexible enough to alter your schedule or destination as needed. Remember, you can always create new adventures, even in your present location or situation, all right? So yeah, there might be a little bit of a setback. Um, that happens before you link up with this person. Um, you know what's funny about that? I just had plans delayed <laughs> and canceled um, myself. So that's really funny that all these cards came up. But uh, yeah, there might be some type of cancellation or rescheduling or like some aspect of hanging out might change um, before you hang out. And don't let that get you down, especially if you're the unicorn person or the camel person, you know? That does, that's not an indication of the person's feelings. Sometimes there just literally is scheduling conflicts or maybe they just aren't in the proper mood to hang out that day. And that's totally fine. Now, if they're canceling on you every single time and it's becoming a habit and it's really starting to bother you, yeah, talk to them about that. Tell them how you feel because that, you know, it needs to be talked about. You know, there needs to be a boundary set there. Um, if that is particularly the case where you're just like, listen, my time's valuable and you're neglecting it and you're disrespecting my, I feel disrespected. Like my time is being disrespected by you canceling so often. Now, if this is just like a one time, two time thing, totally fine be flexible, okay? But if this is a habit that keeps happening, you need to like lay the law down and communicate that to them. You will respect my time or you will not be in my life. <laughs> Point blank period, okay? Maybe that's the Capricorn moon in me talking, but I'm very like, I try to be very, you know, you have to respect your time is what I'm saying. We have recovery. So there's a sense of, um, healing the next time you hang out with this person which is awesome you know this could be like snuggling or just talking about you know your day with each other or um i don't know there's something very healing about the next time you hang out um even if it's just like talking in general um you feel uplifted or you help each other through like with advice or I don't know, there's just, just a very healing um, exchange of energy shared between you guys the next time you hang out, which is really nice to see. We also have um, within the next few months. Okay, so this can give an indication for some people who might be in more long-term situation, or not long-term, uh, long-distance situations, or if this is somebody you can rarely hang out with for whatever the circumstances are, this is an indication to those people that you will hang out with them in the next few months. Now, for other people where it's like you see this person a lot more frequently, so you, you're like, yeah, of course I'm going to see them in the next few months, um, this can show that your relationship is shifting in the next few months, and perhaps the next time you hang out, you talk about your plans, your goals for the next couple of months, um, and also just get a, a general sense of where the both of you are heading directionally in life um, over the next few months so that you can get a more grounded idea of where this connection is going. So there's a lot of good energy um, down here. The next time you hang out, it's gonna be healing. You're gonna get a good sense of like the other person's future projections for themselves, and you're gonna share um, your own future projections for yourself. You're being asked to open and heal your throat chakra, invite more open communication into this connection especially if you feel um disrespected um time wise like um with cancellations or things like that or if you're just completely unsure about the other person's feelings and it is like killing you internally just talk about it because honestly like sometimes things can blow up so much in your own head and then you just mention it to the other person and they're like yeah i really like you like no you don't have to feel that way like and it's just as simple as that simple communication can solve a ton of problems here okay but i feel like a lot of people besides the group number one you might not feel totally like just comfortable talking with each other yet because it could be very new i feel like this is very new energy for most people watching um, or long distance energy where you might have um, fallen out of that comfortability and, you know, I don't know. You're being asked to communicate more, okay? And then your Moonology card that falls in, into the center of this is New Moon in Capricorn. Your hard work is paying off. Okay, that's really cool. So I feel like right now a lot of people who select group number one, you two are in this stage of your connection where you're still kind of getting to know each other, still getting comfortable in communicating with each other and still getting adjusted to each other's energies and i feel like this next time you hang out is gonna really be awesome for you guys because i feel like you're really gonna start seeing that you are in fact heading in the same direction you do in fact want the same things in life and you might have the same feelings towards each other so um that's cool i like that i feel like it's gonna be a really reassuring next time you hang out you know what i mean you're gonna get really clear um 
not really, really, really clear about the direction here, but you're gonna get the general gist um, that you're heading in the same direction and you may have similar feelings for each other, okay? But for those of you interested in romance, um, these next two cards are gonna show each person's romantic feelings towards each other, okay? <laughs> or lack thereof. So let's see what comes up. So for the camel person, we have keep an open mind. Your soul may, uh, may differ from your usual type and expectations. So this camel person, yeah, I'm getting totally like open-minded energy from them. They're willing to try a lot of things out for you or, you know, maybe um, it's not that you're completely different from the usual type of person they go after. You might be, um, but it's just more so like they're just vibing, you know, like this person is the definition of going with the flow, okay? They're very, like they're completely open to trying new activities with you that you might be into that they never tried out or even like if you guys have like a sexual relationship this could be like trying new things out in that realm that they would not normally you know try out on their own but they're like just open-minded vibing with it okay um or maybe like you have unusual ideas for like um date nights or hanging out with them and and they're they're keeping an open mind about it so i like this person's energy like they're vibing okay they are joyful they're going like literally just going Going with the flow keeping an open mind and they're also very emotionally mature and not afraid to have difficult conversations with you they might not be the initiator of those conversations always however if you if you're the unicorn person all you got to do is take that one percent action and this person will take it home you know what i mean um all you have to do is just say hey i'm feeling a little unsure about your um feelings so uh what up with that <laughs> and this person's gonna take it like 99 more percent they're like gonna fully elaborate all of that to you because they're very just emotionally aware and they might easily pick up you know how, what you need to know um in order to feel more secure in that connection or if you're the camel person um keep an open mind and try to initiate maybe a little bit more than you are i feel like that little bit more of initiation would really help this unicorn person feel more comfortable in the connection you know um show your feelings more readily um and initiate a bit more that would make this person feel so much better okay <laughs> Whew, okay so now we're gonna look into the um unicorn person's romantic feelings towards the camel person and we have soulmate yeah i feel like this unicorn person is and this is if, uh, what was I gonna say? This unicorn person, um, they're not the type of person who just has casual connections. This unicorn person is a spiritual, magical, um, energy feeling. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this unicorn person was an energy reader, um, or an empath or anything like that. They can't be happy with just a casual connection, or they can't be happy in a situation where things aren't put on the table very openly and honestly, because they feel everything so deeply. It's like, I feel like all of the connections in their lives are either soulmates, twin flames, karmic connections. There just can't be like a casual, like lighthearted energy <laughs> in their life. They're just not happy in that situation. And if you identify with the unicorn person, maybe you never thought about that, but maybe you need to admit to yourself like, yeah, I can't just do something casual. I can't just do like friends with benefits. Like maybe you are happier um, in, in a more soulmate connection. And I feel like if you're the camel, um, this is good confirmation that the unicorn person views you as a soulmate. And maybe if you're the unicorn, you view your person as a soulmate. Overall, it's just like, yeah, soulmate energy to the house. Like, and I get that from this reading, you know? As I'm doing this, like, I feel like there are really good vibes here. There might be some blockages in communication right now. Um, as you are just getting to know each other or just trying to get comfortable um, with each other and mesh your energies together like i feel like this connection is kind of growing it's not where it's meant to be yet it's not like where you're both fully comfortable fully enmeshed um you know it, it's in the process of getting there but just know that you both want the same things i feel that you both have similar feelings for each other i i don't know i just feel like this camel person um they just feel so much joy so much love and light coming from the unicorn person uh the unicorn person really opens their eyes to a whole new way of thinking a whole new way of living life maybe the unicorn person even introduces the camel person to um higher ways of thinking and spirituality and uh art and just weird uh like very um sacral chakra type things and this person's just overjoyed by it all and meanwhile this unicorn person really views this camel person as like a soulmate a deep connection like these 
these people are meant to be together like they, they're just so similar and if you think about it they are very similar like if you put a camel and a unicorn next to each other they have very similar bodies you know they're both like big mammals with like four legs and you know the little the little head and the long neck so they're very similar people and that's all that like soulmates that's what it is like your souls trying each other if that makes sense <laughs> like your souls um just correlate so nicely you're just your friends with each other's soul and each other's energy and your energies are very similar yet also different enough to make it interesting so you each bring something uh good to the table so the next time you hang out um i i do see it's gonna be you know more conversations to get more comfortable your hard work is paying off it's gonna be you know opening up a little bit more with each other it's gonna be um having deeper conversations um i don't think i would not say that you're gonna have 100% clarity and like, you know, this person's gonna be like, I love you, be with me forever the next time you hang out. I feel like that would be jumping the gun a little bit in this connection. Um, but I do see um, it building the next time um, you see each other and it'll continue to build over the next few months. So very good um, confirmation there. If there's been scheduling conflicts, um, you don't need to be questioning the other person's feelings. They're not creating a scheduling conflict because they don't like you. I just see this as a genuine scheduling conflict, okay? So there's your reassurance if you've been dealing with that. All right, thank you guys for joining me. Um, beautiful connection. I'm very excited to see where this goes for you. Um, leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear, group number one, what your current um, relationship with this person is. Uh, like, what do you, what, who, what are you like for each other? Like, what are you, how, who are you in each other's lives? And um, did this resonate? How did it resonate? Let me know. All right, bye. Group number two, you guys selected the stone that the state of Maine gifted to me when I went there for the first time. Um, yeah, so how this is gonna work. This little pile over here is one person, this little pile is the other person, whichever side you most identify with, that is you, and perhaps the other person is your person that you're questioning about. Um, you might also find a little bit of you and a little bit of them in both piles. Whatever resonates, take it. Whatever doesn't resonate, leave it. You know what I mean? Like if you resonate strongly with one side, then you know, you, you get the gist of it, okay? This little center pile of cards will show us um, what's specifically going to happen um, the next time you see each other. So let's dive into it. Pa person number one here is being represented by the Cosmic Egg. What a fun card. This is just like pure creative spiritual wise energy this is like unearthly energy okay this is somebody who's just literally out of this world all right this is raw creative energy okay so whoever this person is they're significant all right whether it's you whether it's them awesome um their chakra which is being most um affected the next time you hang out and currently in your connection is the throat chakra impatience okay yeah and you know what these cards kind of go along well together i feel like this um cosmic egg person might be a little bit impatient um to get the ball rolling on things in this connection okay <laughs> and then we have uh, or even just get the ball rolling in their life you know impatient to move things along all right I resonate with that okay so if you're this cosmic egg person don't feel bad because i'm the same exact way their energy is healer of the ages yeah this cosmic egg person is something special healer of the ages is like literally a healer this is somebody who might do reiki or they might be a psychic or you know a shaman or might literally be like a doctor like this person does a lot of healing work um in the universe in the world whether they realize it or not um Although I have a feeling they do consciously realize it because the, the forehead here is enlightened, it's illuminated, uh, which shows consciousness, you know what I mean? So this person, similar to group number one, is very spiritually awakened, very um, creatively awakened as well. They're a healer, they're creative, um, and they're like a co-creator with reality, which is probably why they might get impatient at times because it's just like, I just want to manifest something new. I want to keep the ball rolling, you know what I mean? So this person's a little bit impatient in the connection or might be a little bit impatient um, to see this person again, you know? So it's not necessarily a bad thing that they're impatient. It could also just show, um, you know, some feelings. So let's see person number two. They're being represented by the moth. Woo, this is like uh, light worker energy almost, you know, the moth to the flame, the moth to the light. They're drawn into the light. And I dare I say, they might be drawn into the amazing light that this cosmic egg person gives off. Their chakra that's being most activated with this connection is wisdom. 
and this is heart uh heart chakra so this is like very um wise healing wisdom going on here this is a very interesting connection and also we have a lot of green going on lots of heart chakra energy i feel like this moth person feels very deeply about this connection and then their energy is cornucopia they're all oh, whoever this moth person is whether it's you or the other person their heart is just overflowing with love here okay this person is just so pure so loving so i was looking into um the booklet definition um of this moth card here and this person is somebody who i feel is putting the connection on a pedestal so if you identified with this moth uh person beware of putting the other person on a pedestal and if you identified more with the cosmic egg person beware that this other person might be putting you on a pedestal um the moth can be a type of person that is really attracted to the new and shiny things in life you know grass is always greener on the other side type of energy but you know they're very they're represented by air so there is um you know some danger here and we also have the bird over here representing air they could be an air sign oh and there's a butterfly um so they could be a uh, libra uh aquarius or gemini they don't have to be but they might have a lot of airy, etheric qualities, very um, fast talking, fast moving, fast thinking, wanting things now, 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 you know. They might have a little bit of ADHD brain like myself. Um, and they just, you know, I, I feel like there's a little bit of both of you in each other because here's the thing. This person has impatience, which I'm totally getting from the moth as well. But then we also have all this spiritual healing energy from this side. But I'm also getting that from this side as well because they have deep healing uh, heart-based wisdom. You know what I mean? So you guys are strangely enough very similar, um, but almost in like different ways. Like I feel like you, it's, it's strange. It's like a push and pull type of energy that I'm feeling here that I can't quite describe in words. But you both seem to have like healer type of vibes. Um, in different ways i feel like this person almost um is a healer in the sense of like third eye chakra where it's like you know they um can perceive the past and the future and you know they can see um beyond the veil they can see you know what's what lies between the lines you know they don't need this other person to tell them how they feel they can kind of pick up on how the other person feels whereas this person's more so of like a healer light worker in the heart space you know they have wisdom they have um deep unconditional love for like everyone um which they may express by being totally interested in you know meeting new people new friends all that good stuff um and kind of just being a little bit of a social butterfly sometimes so i feel like you're both healers and you're both <laughs> impatient <laughs> So you're definitely a match for each other. What's interesting about both of these spirit animals though is that like the message for both of them is that the journey never ends. You know, with the cosmic egg, this is just like raw life force energy. You know, it never, it doesn't have a final destination point. It just keeps on going and changing and shifting and evolving. And the, the message behind the moth card here as well is like, trying to view things more as like a journey rather than a destination so let go of that the grass is greener on the other side mentality because things are always growing and evolving and changing and like i don't know so you both kind of have the same lesson um in this connection so you're this relationship seems to have a spiritual lesson behind it uh which would also explain why there's so much like spiritual healing type of cards here um this connection between the both of you are teaching both of you to enjoy the journey of life this connection doesn't have to have a final destination point it's always evolving it's always changing and shifting in different directions you know so i just find that so interesting like cosmic egg person if this is you watching there's no need to be impatient about this connection because there's no destination here okay it's just the journey that is teaching you these wisdoms and healing you and evolving you and you know bringing more love and light and ideas and creativity you know like your spirit guides are trying to tell both of you at this time there is no destination in this relationship it's the connection itself that brings forward all this beautiful energy so anyways that was really deep let's look into <laughs> what's actually going to happen like the next time um you hang out so we have some energy cards here that'll give us the overall energy of um the next time you hang out so we have angel of balance yeah so it's gonna be a very tempered um even keeled uh next hangout session you know it uh this could be like just calm energy and also i want to notice that she's blue here so there could be a lot of talking um a lot of communication and just 
balancing out the scales if there's been any situation where one person feels like they're giving or taking more or less in this connection the next time you hang out it's gonna be um balanced out we also have deceit reversed which i don't think is a bad card but let me double check that in the booklet okay i pulled out this booklet for group number one two for one of their cards i want more clarity on it so yeah deceit reversed receiving this card reversed puts you on notice that the deceit of the past is over or about to end yay perhaps um an enmity at work uh, is being dissolved or maybe a more open communication has developed in your personal life Yeah, so the next time you hang out there will be some further uh, communication if there was any arguments between you two Because for I feel like a lot of you guys you're not like group number one where this is a Completely new connection like maybe you've been talking for several months or maybe this is a more long-term thing um, but I feel like any Thing where you felt wronged in the recent past of this connection is going to be corrected the next time you hang out through communication or if there's anything that you're just unclear about in the connection it will be resolved the next time you hang out okay so it's a really good combination of cards here honestly um, be assured that the negative and dishonest energy is on its way out um, and take advantage of new peaceful and open environment one where you'll be comfortable to forge more success and greater comfort so these are really good confirmation cards that um if you watching have been hurt in the past by liars cheaters and thieves you don't have to worry about that with this person okay um and perhaps maybe there was some deception in this uh connection in some way shape or form even if it wasn't like malicious uh deception it could be deception in the fact like somebody's not giving all of their feelings or they're just not sharing how much they really care about you or vice versa maybe you're not or maybe um, they didn't relay some information or you're not relaying information that might be vital to the connection. Everything's coming to the table the next time you hang out is kind of what I want to say. And I don't want to scare you with that. It's just more so like the next time you hang out, everything is being put on the table, you know, which is exactly what y'all need. So on a deeper level, this card reversed is telling you that uh, the period of self-deceit is over, yeah. You are now ready to see the abiding truth of your own value, power, and deserving. It may take continued effort, but your honesty with yourself regarding these truths will bring even greater value to your life. So I feel like group number two, you're almost like one step ahead of group number one. <laughs> if you want to watch their uh, pile two, go for it. I feel like they're like a younger version of this connection. Um, but I feel like you guys are really just going to be putting all of your cards on the table, being really transparent about, um, your feelings, your motives in this connection. And, uh, I feel that especially, I feel like somebody in this connection might have some tiny little bit of resentment or insecurity in regards to this and in regards to the other person's feelings, um, that are going to come out the next time that you see each other, you know, it's, it's just going to really become clear. And I feel like there's going to be a lot of healing the next time you hang out. A lot of open communication and conversation that will bring the balance and the peace and the love back into this connection. And it's just going to be nice. So I'm glad to see that. So let's see the other Oracle cards. We have ask for help from others. Yes, guys, I feel like both of these people need to be more communicative. And so asking for help from others is like literally I'm seeing this as you asking the other person for whatever you need. Reassurance what are your feelings what are your intentions ask for help even if it's just a personal issue in your life that has nothing to do with the connection this could just be asking for advice from the other person you know there's a lot of talking in the next time you hang out there's a lot of asking and answering and just straight up communication i love that i love that for you so much communication going on the next time you hang out lots of conversations to be had um, and, you know, asking for the other person's input, asking for the other person's advice, or asking for what you need. And I feel like the other person's going to ask for what they need to, you know? Uh, sometimes in the beginning of a connection, it can be really hard to ask for exactly the reassurance that you need from the other person. And I feel like the next time you hang out with this uh, person of yours, um, you're going to be able to just feel more open, if that makes sense. More comfortable communicating. I feel like there's going to be a lot of reassurance here. Then we also have no need to worry. Okay, yeah, things are gonna be fine. Um, some of you guys watching might be the type of person to get a little bit, um, uh, not uneasy, but like anxious before hanging out with people who you're not 110% comfortable with. I know I'm like that. Like it takes me months to become fully comfortable with someone. 
uh, you know, I'm a cancer. <laughs> if you're a cancer, you probably know what I'm talking about too. Like we hide in our shells for a long time. And then it's like the day we feel like we 100% like get a grasp of the other person and feel comfortable in them. It's like, boom, we let it all out. Like it's like zero to hundred real quick. Like the second we become comfortable with somebody, it's just like, so anyways, I have all these feelings and all these ideas and like I'm moving in and <laughs> Does anyone else feel me on that? Is anyone else here a cancer son or have major cancer placements and they feel that? I would be very interested to hear that in the comment box, but um, regardless of your astrological placements, um, yeah, I feel like the next time you hang out is going to make a significant progress in your level of comfortability and feeling like you can just communicate about anything with this person. So it's almost like the floodgates of communication are opening. And now I'm thinking back to a time in my own life. Sometimes, you know, spirit gives me personal examples and memories uh, that relate to like the energy of the reading. So there's this time in my life where um, these two guys hung out with my friend group, you know, but they weren't really close to us. They were like introduced to us through a mutual friend and it was just them hanging out without the mutual friend and we all just like started talking about that mutual friend and all kind of opened up at the same time about how we wanted to be super close friends with these two guys and how you know they don't have to feel obligated to keep talking to that mutual friend because they did not like her it's a long story but it, it was like the floodgates of communication and friendship just opened right before our very eyes it was so beautiful um even though that sounds kind of toxic now that i'm looking back on it <laughs> the reason that we started opening up but um, I just feel like your floodgates of communication with this person are really gonna start opening and it's like the next time you hang out It's like I don't know Maybe like somebody says one thing or there's like one small conversation and it just shifts the energies entirely and it's just like Oh my gosh, you feel that way. I feel that way. Like let's talk more about it. You know what I mean? Um, it's like that awkward energy is done. Okay, it's coming to an end the next time you hang out. So I, I really like that. Uh, regardless of whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, you guys. So like, even if the floodgates of communication involve you guys realizing you don't even like each other, it's still gonna be such a nice experience to just like finally understand <laughs> what's going on in this connection. Um, although I don't feel like for a lot of you guys, it's gonna be anything negative like that, or that's not even negative really, but you get what I'm saying. It's just like, finally, you're gonna start feeling more open to communicate. It's gonna be very healing time, okay? And then Mama Moon coming in with uh, what's gonna happen um, the next time you see each other. She said, oh my gosh, the same card came out for group number one. This is the new moon in Capricorn. Your hard work is paying off. Yeah, guys, wow. And it also came up, up came out upside down for them too, but we'll, we'll read it up right. The new moon in Capricorn. Um, it really just is a really good time to uh, start a new cycle, new moons in general. Capricorn is also the sign of like hard work and just being really clear. Like I'm a Capricorn moon, so I, I can tell you right now, the Capricorn moon is all about being crystal clear with your intentions, what you're doing. Like the sign of Capricorn with the moon, it's just like no BS with your emotions, okay? Like, it's just like, I don't want to entertain these weird, tricky, toxic situations. Like, straight up tell me what you want so you don't waste my time. That's the Capricorn moon, okay? So uh, this coming out as like a new moon. I was actually born on the full moon of Capricorn, but the new moon in Capricorn, it's like the start of that open energy. And it's like your hard work is paying off. You know, dealing with this tricky type of um, getting to know each other type of energy, it's, it's going to all start paying off now. Sticking to your gun, sticking to your boundaries, to what you want in connection, and just trying your best to be your best version. It's all going to pay off in this connection. Uh, the next time you hang out, you know, the floodgates of communication are opening. That's like the mantra of this reading. So final cards is for anyone who's particularly interested in romance with this person. I feel like most of the people watching are. So we're going to look into the romantic um, feelings that each person has for each other. So the cosmic egg person, uh, their romantic feelings are pay attention to the red flags. This person is a little bit on guard. Okay. I don't want to say that they view the moth person as toxic or anything, but they have some basic concerns, which are understandable because with the moth person here, they are giving off, um, you know, the impression of like, well, I can't even say they're giving off the impression. They're kind of um, putting the other person on a pedestal a little bit. Um, and they might give off the impression to the cosmic egg person uh, that, and if you're the moth person, please bear me, with me uh, through this and just keep an open mind. The moth person um, might be giving off the impression that they're only really interested in the new shininess of this connection. And this cosmic egg person just might be a little bit insecure uh, about whether or not the moth person is actually going to stick through it long term. So there are questions there and I feel like the cosmic egg person is kind of impatient to figure this person out. If you're the moth person, please be mindful of giving off that impression. 
Um, or even if that is something that you do and you do tend to put other people on pedestals. I mean, I know I do, I'll admit that. Um, to just be mindful of that, okay? And try to take things a bit slower, both of you. Okay, so this person's just paying attention to the red flags here um, and just trying to figure this thing out. You know, I feel like the cosmic egg person is impatient to just understand this connection. They're impatient to just figure out where things are going. Um, so it's really good for the cosmic egg person to open up some conversation. And I feel like the cosmic egg person might be the person who low key has some type of resentment or needs some type of clarification or um, reassurance in this connection that they're gonna open up about. So if you're that cosmic egg person, open up about what is concerning you, okay? Because I feel like just asking the, ask for help from others. Yeah, just ask the person about what's concerning you and you're gonna get confirmation and things are gonna be cleared up and you can have your peace again, you know? So that's a really important message if you are in fact the cosmic egg person. And if you're the moth person, um, please reassure the cosmic egg person that they can open up about anything to you. Like reassure them, reassure them, reassure them. And like just create a safe environment for them to open up, you know? So anyways, let's look into the moth person's uh, Romantic energies here. Calling in your soulmate. Okay. Your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. Yeah. Okay. This moth person, and it could be you, could be them, could be a little bit of both, really has the hots for the cosmic egg person. Okay. This moth person is a hopeless romantic out here falling in love. All right. I uh, totally get the moth person. I feel like I, I'm very similar to whoever this moth person is. Just absolutely daydreaming, falling in love with, you know, the cosmic egg person. Like, we're talking daydreams. We're talking visualizations. We're talking like, you know, showing up in their actual dreams. Okay. So there is no questioning the moth person's feelings here. I feel like the cosmic egg person, um, it's not that they don't have the same capacity of feelings as them. It's just more so they're more realistic and kind of taking things from a, not like slower, I don't want to say slower moving because clearly they're impatient, but like, they're just like, okay, but like, let's take things logically because I don't want to get hurt. You know, they are a healer. Um, like, let's just clarify some things and then I'll unlock my feelings. And if you look at it, it's almost like the snake is protecting the feelings of this like egg and all this love and emotions and stuff. So this cosmic egg person is kind of like that Cancerian energy I described earlier, where it's like they have all this sweetness, all this love, all this romance, all this amazing energy within them, but they kind of keep people a little bit at a distance. Um, like it's literally a snake, <laughs> which keeps people at distance. They might be keeping the moth person a little bit at a distance until they fully feel comfortable and then they will completely unleash this crazy cosmic energy, okay? So if you identify with the moth person and you feel that the cosmic egg person is keeping you at an arm's length, just know that they they might be the type of person who needs to get really comfortable first. They need to have a little bit more time, even though they're impatient, before they fully show you the real them, okay? And that's fine, honestly, that's fine. As long as they're not like leading you on, totally fine. As long as things are moving forward a little bit at least, okay? You're not at a complete standstill. As long as there's a little bit of growth, um, this moth person just needs... That's the biggest difference between you guys. Even though this person has impatience, I feel like this moth person is more impatient on like a soul level. <laughs> just more like quick moving in love than this cosmic egg person, okay? This person is on guard. They need to know more about this person. They need to open up conversation. So if you're the cosmic egg person, please talk to the moth person about anything that's concerning you because we really need these healing conversations here, okay? And if you're the moth person, try your best to get this person off of a pedestal. I mean, your feelings are beautiful, but you know, don't let your overwhelming amount, your abundance of love and feelings, um, force you to kind of like rush this connection and accidentally let this connection go because you don't think it's moving at a fast enough rate, okay? That's the biggest um, incompatibility here, but it's not a long-term incompatibility. It's just more so like this moth person needs to not move on so quickly if they think that this person's not opening up fast enough. Like this person falls in love real easily and is willing to open up real fast. Uh, this person needs a bit more time to do that. Um, yeah, but otherwise, the next time you hang out, it's going to be a lot of clarity on that. So, yeah, that's what I want to say. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you 
for the next reading. Um, I'd be very interested to see what your current dynamic with this person is. So just say like, hi, I picked group number two. This is where we're currently at, you know, and I'm sure other people who selected group number two would love to hear um, other people's uh, situations as well and how this resonates with you, okay? Thank you guys, bye. Okay, so if you select the group number three, I remember where I got this stone now. I got it from Forks, Washington um, on a beautiful little romantic hike I went on. Um, so yeah, very good vibes all around coming from this stone and from this pile already. But, so how this is gonna work, we have two piles here, like right here, and then there's like a center pile right here. This represents the two people in the connection, you and the other person. So whichever side you most resonate with, that would probably be you, and then the other side is your other person. You might also find a little bit of your energy in the other person's pile or vice versa. You know, just take whatever resonates and leave anything that doesn't, okay? Sometimes if you're getting like, you and them vibes from both piles like you could see both of yourselves in both sides that can really just show that you're mirroring each other a lot um and you have similar energy so let's dive right into it person number one is being represented by the vulture mm. their chakra that is most activated um in this connection here at this time is isolation and this is the throat chakra this is like almost like not feeling heard or understood in a way whether that's good or bad it doesn't have to be like super dark and bad like oh i don't feel heard or understood by this person if you're in a new connection it could also just show like you know they haven't they don't feel like you know the real them or you if you're the vulture person feel like the other person doesn't really know the full you yet you know so it doesn't have to be bad or maybe they're just lonely <laughs> and want to hang out i don't know well we'll see what the other cards have to say and then the vulture person's um energy here is the sixth chakra archangel metatron third eye open lots of blue energy as well i want to say throat chakra is about to be open as well so let's see the other person person number two is being represented by the firefly shiny butt <laughs> I love fireflies. Um, the chakra that's most activated um, from this connection at this time is insecurity, root chakra. There's some, definitely some healing, um, some conversations that need to be had here. And then their energy is being represented by happy family. How sweet. Okay, so I'm getting some pretty specific um, messages here. Um, the vulture is a very misunderstood creature. Uh, you know, people look at vultures as just like these violent aggressive creatures and and they're not very well understood you know they do the dirty work of the ecosystem they you know eat dead things <laughs> so those, they're just very misunderstood creatures generally speaking um which is interesting because that's paired with isolation so whoever this person is in the connection perhaps i don't know what's happened in your connection um but this person might feel a little bit misunderstood or perhaps they feel i don't want to say disrespected but they might feel disrespected or just otherwise like unseen so or underappreciated really i don't know okay or maybe they're just feeling a little bit um out in the cold i don't there's there's some interesting energies going on here with this person in particular uh they almost feel like the other person in the connection um doesn't really know the full them yet and if you identify more as the firefly um there might be some work that needs to be done there in getting to know this person better and trying to see things from their perspective okay now the firefly person uh in this connection this shows somebody who's extremely creative you know they have a spark of inspiration and they follow it um very enthusiastically um and then that spark quickly fades out again as well um and then they enter a period of rest or um relaxation and then they get another burst of energy another creative inspiration and then it goes away so i feel like the firefly person in this connection might accidentally sometimes come off as playing games of hot and cold and i if you identify more with the firefly i need you to be really real with yourself and don't beat yourself up over this but also don't be offended by these messages because you know we've all made um weird choices here but if it's in your nature to kind of like become quickly obsessed with something or have these bursts of like talkative energy and love and light and then you have these bursts of like withdrawing and going within and just resting and being on your own uh that's totally fine and if that's natural for you like by all means don't beat yourself up over that however um if you are this firefly person there needs to be more self-awareness of how that could affect um the vulture person here who may at times feel like you totally understand them uh you have six chakra energy here where it's like 
you totally see them for who they are, but then there's like these weird bursts where um, you don't know, they or they don't know what you're thinking. There might be these weird bursts where, um, I don't know. And if you're the vulture person, the firefly person in this connection could simply be like, they have free time like one day and they talk to you all the time, they hang out, it's great, it's amazing. But then they're super busy for like three days and then they kind of like leave you on the back burner. Or maybe they're just like, they, they have these bursts of love and passion and light and energy. But then, you know, they get distracted and do something else and then they leave you on the back burner. Possibly working on one of their projects or uh, school or work, whatever, you know. So there's kind of like um, a mishmash of energies going on here that uh, might not be totally compatible. But if you guys really like each other, um, this could be worked through. Because I don't think that anyone's intentionally being mean to the other person. I just feel like um, your ways of going about relationships and life in general are quite different. I feel like the vulture person, uh, their energy generally um, seems pretty consistent. You know, uh, this person's definitely in their divine masculine, regardless of gender, regardless of like sexual orientation. When I use these words, you know, don't take it in that way. But this person's more in their masculine energy where it's like they like a consistent everyday um, schedule or flow of energy, you know? The divine masculine is kind of represented by the sun. It's very sure, you know, that the sun's gonna rise and set and you know what time it's gonna rise and set. And the daily routine is pretty typical, pretty normal. This person might have like a normal um, nine to five job or a pretty regular schedule and logical way of doing things. Whereas this firefly person is a creative, they're a visionary, you know? They have this spontaneous energy. They have these bursts of inspiration and love and then these bursts of like sleeping and healing, you know? They're very divine feminine, like the moon, which waxes and wanes and has these di different energy cycles, you know? Um, so the, their ways of operating are very different. Although if you notice, they are both being represented by fire. So there is a compatibility here. It's not, not all is lost, okay? There is a compatibility here. They're both represented by fire. They both have passion for life. They both have this amazing sensual, sensuality, the sensual connection. Um, and you know, this warmth about their souls and their way of doing things. Um, you know, the vulture person here is like very um, magnetic. I wanna say like mysterious, very um, just like sexy, I wanna say. <laughs> And then this firefly person is just warm and bubbly and like boom 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 all over the place. But you're both fire just being represented in two different ways, you know what I mean? I feel like this person's like a blue fire and then this person's like a warm bonfire. But you're both fire, that's what I'm saying. Like there is compatibility here. Um, there is, and the, your ways of doing things um, need to be gapped, they need to be bridged, okay? But moving on to the firefly person anyways. There may be some uh, insecurities um, in their heart space here. We see that the heart is on this and then there's like a little demon coming out of it. This person's been hurt in the past, um, which is why they may unintentionally play mind games, okay, of hot and cold. It's like you re they really like the vulture person, so they're feeling really warm and talkative and bubbly, but then they have these insecurities bubble up out of nowhere. Um, that's just like, oh, what if they don't like me? What if um, they're not the one for me? Like, what if they're only pretending to like me. Like, you know, really ridiculous insecurities. Um, and it's because they've been hurt in the past, okay? They have demons from the past bubbling back up. And then that's when they kind of pull their energies back subconsciously or consciously, you know? And they're just like, all right, well, maybe if I pull back, um, we'll see if this person reaches out to me first. We'll see how much they really like me, you know what I mean? To make themselves feel more secure. Now, if you identify with the firefly person, um, you have to be real with yourself if this is a pattern you have. And my advice for that if you do have that pattern or if you have kind of done that i know i'll be the first to admit i have done that in the past um you know after i got out of a really bad relationship um and i started talking to someone new um i might have accidentally <laughs> played the hot and cold game um because uh you know just just insecurity like i overthink and then i'm like oh they don't like me let me pull my energy back now the only advice i have for you to get over that because i've had to get over that myself would be to literally just bite the bullet and be more consistent in communication. Like even if there's insecurities there of like, oh, they don't like me, just keep talking to them. Keep making them feel important. Keep being your warm, authentic self, okay? If they don't reciprocate, that's their problem, not yours, okay? They're the one missing out here, not you. So firefly person, person, I really want you to pay attention to that and do not take your energy back from this connection. Do not withdraw your energy from this connection just because you're insecure. Now, if you're the vulture person and you've been experiencing that hot and cold game, I feel uncomfortable calling it a game because I'm not 
100% sure if the firefight person is consciously aware that they do this um, or that the problem that comes from it. But uh, anyways, if you're the vulture person and this person's being like that with you, um, keep in mind that the reason they're doing that is because A, um, their energy naturally operates like that, um, naturally has these bursts of energy and then these, you know, periods of rest, okay? Uh, they might have ADHD like me. I've been talking about that a lot in my videos. Um, but they might have like this hyper focus where they hyper focus on the connection and then they get really distracted, which is a very big problem with us. Um, and I kind of see similar problems here with this person. Um, but anyways, another reason might be because they are insecure. So they get overly focused on, you know, overthinking, um, engaging in these insecurities and then they pull their energy back. But really, I feel like this fire fight this firefly person has a lot of warmth amazing feelings of family regarding this person like the firefly person in this connection can see themselves you know being long term with the vulture person the firefly person low key can see like you know i don't know why i just got this message of like the firefly person might have like daydreams of having kids with the vulture person even if they don't want kids they might have daydreams about having kids or family with this person like the firefly person actually does have feelings i can see that they're just there's some insecurities that they need to work through. And also there's just a general difference in the way that your energies flow. Like the vulture person is just a natural flow of energy. This person it's like boom energy, <gasps> boom energy, you know, but there's like that period of rest in between where it's like, you know, they're, they're not as focused on the connection. So we need to talk about that openly, but let's get into the, and also, I want to point out, I feel like the vulture person does have feelings as well. Um, they're just feeling a little left out in the cold and they don't know what to do about that, okay? And I feel like they also are very well aware of the firefly person's feelings because this person is very intuitive, very psychic with the sixth chakra. So this person knows that this person has feelings. However, it's like they're not going to show feelings and open up until this firefly person starts acting right, you know what I mean? Or like at least, it's almost like people who are psychic and I'm saying this as a psychic, um, I can tell when somebody has feelings for me, but I'm not going to engage with them as if they have feelings for me until they, you know, have the balls to just say it. <laughs> Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Like, I'm, I'm not gonna like re, like obviously I can read into the energy of a situation. I can gather those context clues like that, but I'm gonna pretend like I don't read into it until the other person is just straightforward and brings it to the earthly 3d realm does that make sense and maybe if you're watching and you're this vulture person or even if you identify with firefly you might identify as being a little bit more psychic a little bit more spiritual you are in fact watching a tarot card reading so i wouldn't be surprised and you can tell that the other person has feelings for you but it's almost like all right but i'm gonna wait till they show it but i want to give you the message like also, don't be afraid to show your feelings as well, even if it's not reciprocated by the other person. Like, literally, that's the biggest problem here. Y'all just need to tell each other how you feel. Point blank, period. Okay? So. <laughs> Let's dive into what's going to happen the next time you see each other. Yin and yang. Yeah. This is the bridging of energy. I need to double check um, this card because I know when it's upright, it either yin and then if it's in reverse then it's yang so i need to double check that it did come up upright we have third chakra archangel chemuel reverse this is um solar plexus energy which is all about confidence so yeah lack of confidence is kind of an issue in this connection um and feelings of insecurity or like not being enough may also be um an issue in this connection here with that card in reversed so and also with that card in reversed i feel like the next time you hang out one or both of you might be a little bit low on energy that doesn't have to be a bad thing um it could just be a very restful um quiet evening together you know what i mean so that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing um given the context of this reading but anyways um upright the yin yang card is represents <laughs> Okay, this is a yin cycle. So yeah, yin energy is feminine energy. It's just that empty space of calm and meditation. The next time you hang out, it's going to be very calm, okay? So it might be at a little quiet tea house. It might be at um, one of your guys' homes and you just have a quiet evening snuggling or watching a movie or something. Just very relaxed, low-key um, 
time because one or both of you is going to be a little bit tired or just not feeling like going out just feeling like staying in relaxing so that's the general gist and vibe of what it's going to be like when you hang out okay the divine feminine also the yin that's being represented here um is also a good time to have conversations so you know just a nice relaxing time where you can have healing conversations but you know these are just representing like just being comfortable in each other's energy the next time you see each other even if you don't have those conversations so we also have listen to your intuition there's a lot of unspoken feelings in this connection there's a lot it's almost telepathic i want to i feel like both people are picking up on the insecurities of the other person and also the feelings of the other person and both people might be waiting for the other person to open up about their feelings you know what i mean so it's kind of like a catch-22 situation where you both are psychically tuned into the other person and their feelings and their fears here but both of you guys are also not doing anything until the other person speaks up <laughs> it's quite the predicament so i would recommend if you're watching this to just speak up because who knows if your other person's watching a video like this okay like to just get out of this annoying cycle just speak up okay speak up about your feelings speak up about um your insecurities here and allow yourself to be reassured we also have it's up to you okay that's really good confirmation for literally what we just said you you watching have to be the one to start these conversations i know i know you might not want to do that you might be lacking confidence in starting these conversations about feelings you might be lacking confidence in explaining your insecurities or what you need um clarity about in here maybe you just need to know the other person's feelings and you just have to say hey like what are your feelings for me like <laughs> You know but this card it's up to you with an angel literally pointing at you and kind of laughing it's just like listen linda you gotta you gotta be the one you gotta you gotta have this conversation because I, what i'm getting the message is that the angels of romance and also spirit guides of both of you in general have been trying to get both of you to open up okay and you watching are I, I don't want to compare and contrast, but you might be slightly more psychic and um, intuitive than this other person. So your spirit guides are coming in very strongly for you and they're saying, listen, you have to be the one to open up to this, okay? Because you can hear us loud and clear. You, you see the situation loud and clear. You understand the other person's feelings and insecurities loud and clear. They also pick up on yours, but like, I don't know what it is about you watching. You need to open this conversation up, like about feelings and insecurities. Okay, glad we're on the same page. And then Mama Moon's coming in to say, full moon in Capricorn. What is with this? Pile one and two had the new moon in Capricorn. Y'all got the full moon in Capricorn. I was born under this moon, so I am very well aware of it because this moon essentially is my entire emotional personality. The end of a tough cycle approaches. Yeah, so full moons are all about um, Kind of shifting um energy shifting gears a little bit um full moons are very emotional times it's like the energy is at a peak okay and with capricorn i'll just explain what i, I explained to um group number two i was born under a full moon capricorn and us capricorn moons if you're a capricorn moon too comment down below love love that moon twins um you see capricorn moon people are no nonsense about our emotions and our emotional energies it's kind of just like don't waste my time what are your feelings what are your intentions and like let's not waste any time like let's just get it all out on the open you know capricorn's a sign about like the divine masculine it's a sign about like work and i want to say like clarity you know it's just, it's just very like boom 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 what are we doing here what's what's being organized you know like where is this going it's an earth sign it's just very grounded in that way of like all right, let's figure out what's going on here, okay? Like, I'm not messing around. I'm not wasting my time. I'm not wasting my energy. Like, if you're not going to open up, like, bye, okay? <laughs> That's how I view connections, okay? Um, the switch, the on and off switch of emotions is very much usable. It's like day and night. Like, okay, you're not going to give me direction. See you later. Or if you're going to give me direction, girl, I'm giving you everything, okay? So the full moon Capricorn is just saying, like, the next time you hang out, it's going to be the ending point of this weird confusion between you guys. It's going to be the ending point of not knowing where each other stands, all right? And that could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you approach the situation. 
I'm gonna recommend talking, being open, being honest, okay? Also, I wanna say with this full moon Capricorn energy, both of you strike me as people who can be independent when need be. Um, and I feel like that needs to be communicated more. Like this firefly person needs to communicate why they're hot and cold or like the way that their energy works where they get so like distracted almost by like work and creativity and they don't mean to make this person feel insecure or unheard. And then this vulture person needs to express, you know, just their general need for, um, you know, their own independence. And, you know, also just communicate like, yeah, I'm independent, but like, I also don't want to be alone. Like I want to, have that person to love and have that friend or more um in my life i i don't know i don't know but um this is a really good confirmation that uh the things that are stressing you out about this connection are going to end very soon very soon okay Whew. or maybe the next time you hang out maybe you just realize like okay i don't think this is working and it ends okay so it'll be different for everyone some of you guys, it's gonna, the tough times of this connection are ending one way or another, depending on who's watching and the connection you have. It could be ending by saying, this person isn't for me, gotta move on. Uh, they're just not opening up. And you have that clarity the next time you hang out with them. You're like, why, why am I still here? Or vice versa. Um, the other person sees that in you and communicates that to you in some way, shape or form. Or you guys talk to each other and you do like each other and you're able to bridge that gap in communication and uh that'll be the end of that tough weird cycle of not knowing where the other person stands okay so it's ending the next time you hang out one way or another so i look forward to that you know look forward to that change because it's going to be good regardless so the last two cards um are going to show the romantic side and feelings um to each person how the vulture person feels romantically about the firefly how the firefly romantically feels about the vulture so let's start with the vulture they have finances and career yeah this person's very um divine masculine um this says financial issues are a factor in your love life right now okay maybe this person's working a lot or they sense that the other person's working a lot and it's kind of like almost getting in the way of your connection in some way, shape, or form. Somebody in this connection is really busy or perhaps both of you are really busy. Somehow, some way, some form, the vulture person's concerned because of the finances and career aspects that go into this connection. It's kind of, they feel like it's getting in the way of the connection. So there might be some healing work that needs to be done there, some conversation there. Uh, the Firefly's feelings is you deserve love. You are lovable. Yes, this Firefly person needs to work on their insecurities. And this is like the angels. Uh, this is from the Romance Angels deck. The Romance Angels are working with the Firefly person, whether that's you or the other person, to kind of get yourself more secure and understand you are lovable you deserve love like and maybe that's why the firefly person has a hard time talking about their feelings because they are lacking confidence like strongly okay if you identify with the firefly you need to work on your confidence do some self-love rituals um affirmations of confidence like i am charismatic i am deserving of love i deserve love i am lovable um all that good stuff okay more love needs to be infused into the situation, more self-love, as well as just communication of love with each other. Whew. This was a long, deep reading, guys. I feel like there are some issues that need to be um, bridged in this connection, but if you truly, truly love and like each other, it's gonna happen. You just need to open up that line of communication, um, preferably the next time you see each other. Um, Talk to this person about your insecurities or your loneliness. Talk to this person about wanting more or asking them about their feelings. You know what I mean? You're both kind of mirroring each other <laughs> in a strange way. Like you're both aware of each other's feelings, but too afraid to communicate about them. And also like, I don't know, maybe not in the right place to communicate them because you're listening to your fears and insecurities or you're you're like me and you're just like i'm gonna pretend like i can't you know pick up on their feelings until they say something but then you're both doing that so then it creates a situation that doesn't move forward you know so you're you 
you watching or being asked to open up that communication break that cycle all right thank you guys for joining me comment um your situation with this person down below i'd be very interested to hear like what your dynamic is with them and how this resonated okay thank you guys bye hey group number four you guys selected the stone that the atlantic ocean has given me so this pile over here is going to represent one person this pile over here is going to represent the other person in this connection whichever side you feel like you resonate with more that's your side and the other side could be your person um, or perhaps there might be a little bit of both of your energies in both piles uh, use your intuition use whatever resonates for you um, with this if you feel like you're more one pile and the other person's the other one then you know go with that this little center pile will go over uh, the next time you see them so let's dive right into it person number one they're being represented by the lamb beautiful spirit animal um, the lamb is kind of like just so gentle <laughs> so nourishing I, I don't know I love lamb energy the chakra that's being most um, activated in this connection for the lamb person is facade and this is the solar plexus this person might be scared I don't know why I'm just getting like scared vibes um, from these two cards right off the bat uh, and then their energy in this connection is envy reversed that is highly interesting okay person number two over here they're being represented by the earthworm <laughs> i don't know why i really like the way the earthworms depicted in this i mean like when i see earthworms um <laughs> in real life i get a little squeamish even though i'm literally a gardener so obviously i love worms but i like the way it's depicted here we have the chakra that person number two is most activated in this is quest the throat chakra and then their energy in this connection is caring connections reversed okay group number four is coming in with some some tea <laughs> Okay, first I wanna point out that both of these people seem very shy, okay? The earthworm, the lamb, they're both very gentle, shy, beginner type of vibes. The lamb in particular is a kind, gentle, kindred soul um, that's very pure intentioned. So whoever is the lamb person in this connection, they have very pure intentions. Um, and if they're coming off as somewhat like reserved or holding back in this connection, it's not because they're hiding anything it's because they're shy and with the facade card here i don't think this is necessarily um an issue of lying or anything like that it's just more so an issue of the lamb person is not almost like not brave enough or not feeling brave enough to really fully let the earthworm person in to who they really are and to their weird zany authentic self you know behind every shy person is just all of this color of weirdness and fun and adventure and and full of life and personality right but um people who are very kind and tender on the surface you know first off they're almost always very intelligent um because you know i feel like some of the loudest people in the room tend to be the dumbest <laughs> It's just a fact of life. Um, but yeah, this is like a gentle, good intention soul. And with envy reversed, it's not saying that this person is envious or jealous or anything like that. It's just more so they're trying to focus on the present moment um, and be grateful for everything that they have in the present moment. I feel like the lamb person's just happy to be here in this connection. You know what I mean? There's no... Um, negative intentions but because this facade card did come up and envy reversed i feel like the earthworm person might have some suspicions um about the lamb person okay earthworm energy is all about newness this is somebody who might feel a little bit out of their element when it comes to whatever type of relationship you're asking about okay so if this is like somebody you're romantically interested in either you or the other person whoever's being represented by this earthworm might feel a little bit out of their element like they might be whoever the earthworm person is they feel like they're the more inexperienced one um whatever that looks like so that could be relationship inexperience like they just haven't dated that many people sex sexual inexperience they don't feel confident because you know they haven't done much in that arena or maybe they're just young in general and don't feel totally confident in who they are and their abilities so i feel like both of these cards are very um kind of like tender shy kindred spirits and it's beautiful these people are very beautiful okay and i feel like they're like shy almost or like quiet with each other or like kind of holding back their full color their full potential with each other because of different reasons the lamb person is just naturally a very gentle um reserved soul who wants to feel more confident in this connection and get to know the earthworm person better and just be grateful for the moments they have in the present moment like the lamb person is definitely not future oriented um 
quite so much and that can be um, difficult for the earthworm person to understand because the lamb person is kind of just like trying to enjoy the present moment with the earthworm person. Uh, they don't have any agenda. They literally have no agenda. There's no hidden agenda but there's also no agenda. Period. Like they don't know what they want from this connection. They're just kind of feeling it out in the present moment and seeing where it goes. Meanwhile, the earthworm person, um, I feel their energy is very much more enthusiastic and with the quest card here, they do want to look into the future. They do want to, you know, they have a quest in mind with this connection, you know, they might, you know, want something particular out of this connection, like a relationship or commitment or whatever. Um, they just feel a little bit inexperienced for some reason. Maybe the lamb person's a lot older than the earthworm person. Uh, maybe the lamb person has more experience than the earthworm person. I just don't know. And again, these energies can be in used either way. So if you see some of yourself in this group and some of yourself in the other group or vice versa with your other person, uh, you know, take what resonates with you. But you know, there is a lot of like shy, slow removing energy here. Um, now, what I think is concerning is that with the earthworm person, we have caring connections reversed. And when this card comes up, it does sometimes show a break in communication or uh, a relationship in reversed. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, now, I feel like because the earthworm person does feel a little bit out of their element, a little bit insecure, and also they're the one on this quest, um, they're getting a little bit confused by the lambs intentions here and what they want with them. They may also be slightly suspicious of the lamb's intentions because they literally aren't having any intentions, <laughs> you know? So I feel like the earthworm person might be like, listen, what do you want with me? If you don't know what you want with me, then I, I might have to go somewhere else. You know, there's questions about uh, the longevity of this connection um, that the earthworm is experiencing. But I would really like to see these two cards. These are the romance cards. We'll get to them at the end of the reading. These will show what their romantic feelings are for each other, um, if this is a romantic connection. But the next time you guys are going to see each other, let's dive deep into that. We have hostilities reversed. Why did I have a feeling this card was going to come out for this pile? Before I even saw any of the... Um, any of the cards, I, I just had a feeling this card was going to come out. We have angel of balance reversed. My cat Luna's meowing at the door. We have Listen to Your Intuition, You're Ready, and then your Moonology card is New Moon in Taurus, Prosperity Lies Ahead. And it did come out in reverse, but whatever. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, the Angel of Balance card in reverse is a warning card. Guys, whichever side of the spectrum you fall on, the Angel of Balance reversed is like an angel literally coming up to you and saying, listen, you really have to take care of yourself at this time because you're not. And group number four, this could mean literally drinking more water, getting more exercise, going out into the sunlight. For a lot of you guys, this is sleeping more, like just literally giving your body a rest um, and getting your own crap together in life, you know what I mean? Also, this card can come out when there is kind of like an obsessive element um, in a connection or a relationship that actually takes you away from your own self-care. The angel of balance is a loving angel coming up to you and kind of just saying, listen, babe, like it's time to care for ourselves. Drink water, uh, moisturize, meditate, uh, get your cardio in, eat highly nutritious meals, you know, really take care of yourself. Go see a friend. I feel like for some of you guys, group number four, and it might not be all of you, but there is a little bit of an obsession um, with the outcome of this. I have a feeling a lot of you guys are the earthworm person. And it's almost like you're so focused on what is the future of this connection uh, that you're almost willing to end it prematurely because you're like so hyper fixated on it. Uh, whereas the lamb person over here is just trying to enjoy the present moment, trying to, you know, just vibe out and see where things go. Um, you know, they don't have an agenda, but that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. The lamb person is somebody who really just enjoys each present moment. And I feel like the earthworm person almost needs to learn how to enjoy that present moment more. With hostilities reversed, it's giving very similar messages to envy reversed. Both these cards are better off in reversed. Um, this can kind of show like choosing the path of peace instead of hostility, okay? Don't make a problem out of nothing is what I want to say here. So there is real danger that somebody in this connection, and guys, it might not be you. It might be the other person. I didn't mean to like accuse you of not taking care of yourself or like being obsessed with the connection. Could very well be the other person as well or a little bit of both of you. But um, 
there is a danger here of somebody in this connection almost caring too much about the outcome to the point where they bring some hostile energies into the connection because they're so fearful of what the outcome will or will not be. They may also accidentally bring in envious energies as well, jealousy, like, you know, all of this negativity, um, you know, just accusations. Like, I don't know. I, I just feel like somebody in this connection is so deeply involved with this connection and almost obsessed with this connection um, to the point where they're almost willing to lose it because of how painful it is. This non-stop thinking about this other person is. Now guys, if you are this person, first off, you're not alone, okay? I, I've dealt with stuff like this in the past where I become borderline obsessed with people, you know? If you are that person, first off, I wanna say, <sighs> Breathe, <laughs> breathe. Literally the angel of balance gave everything you need to know. Breathe, drink water, eat nutritious meals, get your cardio in, see your friends, get all of your, you know, make sure your house is clean, do your laundry. Focus on those very basic needs of your own. And you know, if you're still constantly thinking about this person while you're taking care of those needs, like, fine, whatever. Sometimes you can't really control that <laughs> or it's really difficult to control that. So um, just bring more grounded energy into your life in general and try your gosh darn best to not overreact because things aren't moving at the pace you would like it to. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and also, if you find that you're not like a super duper obsessed with this uh, connection, but you feel in your intuition that the other person is in a way that's unhealthy, uh, you have the card listen to your intuition. Um, you know, I've also been in situations like that where, you know, I, I'm very interested in the other person. I think they're cool. I think they're great. Um, but then they become a little bit too clingy, a little bit too obsessed. And, you know, normally I like a little bit of clinginess. I'm not even gonna lie. But, um, you know, sometimes it could actually be a real problem. And if you feel like your other person um, is kind of being unhealthy in the way that they're um, connecting with you. You have to pay attention to that. And guys, Caring Connections Reverse came out generally. Um, even if this doesn't represent like willingness to let the relationship go um, in order to avoid the emotional turmoil that um, kind of like love obsession can bring, uh, this can also just represent like somebody it can represent a codependent relationship where there's clinginess and avoidance and the runner chaser dynamic that uh, twin flames are very known, very well acquainted with, you know what I mean? Um, there, there's an unhealthy element to this connection. I'm not gonna, I don't sugarcoat my readings. That's what I'm seeing. There is an unhealthy element to this connection that needs to be worked through. Uh, the next time you see this person, you're being asked to keep your cool. Oh my gosh, you know what song you need to listen to after this? Uh, listen to the song Keep Cool by Major Lazer. I don't know why, that's one of my favorite songs and I was just like keep calm keep cool in my head um go ahead and listen to that there might be lyrics in that song for you Claire audience messages there <gasps> I, I think you need to proceed with caution in this connection I'm not gonna say let go of this person I'm not gonna say break up with this person or whatever you are or release this person you know I'm just saying proceed in this connection with caution don't get too ahead of yourself here take care of your basic physical needs notice what the other person is offering for you or not offering for you like just be very real with yourself about this connection ground your energy in the physical reality if you find yourself getting out of control with like daydreaming about this person or you know imagining um conversations in your head things like that ground yourself by regular reminding regularly reminding yourself what the reality of the connection is you know because in your daydreams in your um head you might envision their highest form you know what the relationship could be all this stuff you know what i mean but then you have to like remind yourself Okay, yeah, that's cool and all, but in reality, we're still getting to know each other. We really don't know each other that well, or, you know, there's some problems we have to overcome, etc. If you find yourself being love obsessed, it's not something you can easily just cure, but you can not react so negatively and not let it neg negatively affect your life by taking care of yourself, taking care of your basic needs, and regularly reminding yourself of the reality of this connection. So it doesn't turn into this like 12th house, Pisces, illusionary type of situation, okay? So clearing away the illusions in this connection, getting very real about what you guys actually are and not getting overly hyped on what this situation could be. And I do feel like the lamb person is doing this a little bit as well because um, the facade card here does show like daydreams. It does show like disillusion in the connection. I feel like you're both putting each other on a pedestal, which is why you're both feeling very shy about this connection. And yeah, so we just need to take each other off the pedestal, keep reminding ourselves, you know, of, of what the reality is here and, and you're good to go. You did have the new moon in 
Taurus. So prosperity lies ahead. New moons are all about um, new beginnings in a connection. So I feel like once you do all of these changes that you're being advised to take um, by your angels, by your spirit guides in this reading, it's going to really start something new in this connection. Um, whether that's, you know, the worst case scenario, you guys go your separate ways, or the best case scenario, you know, you guys take each other off the pedestal, get real about the connection, ground it in physical reality, and it moves along beautifully. But we do see a new start coming in your connection, generally speaking a prosperous start so if there's any um changes or shifts in your energy uh for the better really embrace that okay new moon in taurus taurus is um a very practical sign it's an earth sign they are not the type of sign to get overwhelmed in daydreams and get caught up in their head you know they focus on the practical thing and the practical side of life so this is kind of saying if you focus on the practical side of life a new prosperous beginning will happen in this connection some way shape or form so that's your advice i feel like this is a very um advice heavy reading sometimes that just happens um not always it's just like you know sometimes a spirit uses these readings to like give a message that you might have been ignoring heavily <laughs> so i don't want you to be mad or anything like that and trust me i have been in connections like this as well you are not alone um especially if you identify this other person as like your twin flame yes absolutely all of these messages are for you 100 percent. so let's dive into the romantic feelings here you know hopefully end off on a positive note although i can't guarantee that these are positive cards so let's look into this lamb person's energy romantic energies deception okay i might have to rewind a little bit because the lamb person does have deception and facade and that is a bit of a red flag and if we look at the if we look at the cards they are very similar it's like somebody's wearing a mask and leading this person along somebody's leading this smaller person along who is more vulnerable to be manipulated which is very concerning for me I find that very concerning because the earthworm is specifically a spirit animal of newbie, somebody who hasn't been in situations like this before. And newbies, to be honest, doesn't matter what you're a newbie in, are more easily manipulated. So maybe this lamb person is not um, all they cracked up to be. Ooh. Whew. I need to read into this, okay? Let me read the booklet definition of this and what this means because that just threw a curveball into this whole reading. Hold on, this might have to be a longer reading, guys. That just threw me off. So we're reading from the booklet here because I need to get to the bottom of this. Deception. Somebody's wearing a false self-mask in the relationship. This card is a loving nudge for you to beware of deception within a relationship. This could involve something mild, such, of run of, such as run-of-the-mill politeness where your partner is afraid of offending you by sharing true feelings honestly i do feel like that's what's happening here with this lamp person so maybe it's not as bad as i i had a bad reaction when this card came out but maybe it's not that bad because this lamb person okay lamb spirit is a very shy polite type of person so they might be hiding some of their feelings from you because they're literally just shy or afraid and that doesn't have to be like bad feelings at all like they secretly hate you or anything this could be good feelings too like they're not telling you just how much you mean to them so guys i don't want you to jump to the worst conclusion unless your intuition is telling you to jump to the mm, mm, I, mm, I started saying that but I kind of don't want to say that at the same time because sometimes people confuse their fears with their intuition but you're really gonna have to listen to your intuition with this connection guys okay and if you identify with the lamb person you'll probably already know what all this means like maybe you're not telling the person your feelings or telling them everything about you or, or something like that. Oh, this is weird. Okay, what else does the thing says? It could be anything such as run-of-the-mill politeness uh, where your partner is afraid of offending you by sharing uh, true feelings. Perhaps you're the one wearing the mask because you aren't disclosing something to your partner. Deep down, you know what this card pertains to. So whatever kind of like popped into your mind about what this card is pertaining to, like from the jump that like you feel in your stomach is correct with this lamb person, that's probably what it is, okay? I, I'm sorry I can't be more specific, but there's more than one person watching this. Um, if you want a personal reading with me, or it's just me and you, the link to that is always in the description, spiritpsychic.org, um, to get that there. But, oh man, the romance angels are trying to protect your heart. Please say this invocation either silently or out loud. So, repeat after me, everyone. Romance angels, I ask that you give me a very clear guidance that I can easily notice and understand to reveal the truth about this situation to my conscious awareness. Ask the romance angels right now, and you have to ask at home aloud 
Um, I would prefer aloud, but if you have to in your head, make it a very clear, concise thought. And literally ask the romance angels to unveil whatever this deception type of energy is um, to you. You know what? Why are we sitting here asking? Okay, ask aloud and I'm going to start shuffling the shuffling another deck. Okay, this is going to be a long reading, guys. We're getting to the bottom of this right here, right now. I'm not leaving you off on a weird note like that. So everyone just hold their horses. I'm getting out a tarot deck. <laughs> Y'all already know that I have your back. Like, we're figuring this out. I had to literally pull this deck out from the shelf because I wasn't prepared to use tarot in this reading. It was gonna be an all oracle reading. What is this deception going on with the lamb person? Because we cannot leave this reading on deception. Like, no. So what is this facade they're putting on? What is the mask that they're wearing in this connection? Spirit, romance angels, what is the mask, the deception that the lamb person in this connection is wearing? And guys, again, if you're the lamb person, you already know. So you probably don't need this clarification, but if you identified with that earthworm, the world reversed. Okay, so this could represent feelings or, ooh, you know what? This could also represent that this person's not fully over somebody from their past, which would explain why the envy reversed, hostilities reversed came out. Cause this is like, and if you notice, they both came out on the lamb side. Um, these are cards of like a period of envy is over, a period of hostility is over, okay? This person might've recently gotten into a breakup that they're not fully sure that they're ready to move on from or, Something like that. I'm not saying that's exactly what happened, but for some people watching, that's what happened. They're not like 100% sure if they're over their ex or if they're ready for a new connection, which would be why they're kind of moving things very slowly right now. But they don't want to tell that to the earthworm person because they fear that the earthworm person is going to move along. And this person is interested in the earthworm person, but they... You know, they, they don't want to lose the earthworm person because their feelings are going slower. Their healing journey is taking a little bit slower. Um, yeah. Oh, we have the six of pentacles reversed. This could be like um, not a fair give and take. This could also be, and this is a very specific and won't apply to every single person. They might not have shared with the earthworm person just how much or how little money they make. I don't know why that message came up with that, but they're not being fully transparent about um, their economic situation. Um because they're afraid again that the earthworm person is going to leave but the less they share about their life the less open they are the more likely the earthworm person is going to leave so it's kind of an unfortunate situation because this lamb person's shy okay they do not feel natural at um communicating their emotions and what's on their mind so they just kind of put up like this facade not i don't even feel like it's intentional it's just more so out of fear of the other person leaving or not liking it but they know they have to have these conversations and if you're the slam person literally have the conversations okay literally just do it okay um yeah that wasn't as bad as i thought it was okay also the ten of wands came out yeah and then king of swords reversed at the bottom which shows you know not having good communication skills i don't think the lamb person's lying okay maybe for some of you guys like this is just full-blown lying situation but i really don't feel like it's that for the majority of you watching so don't be scared um but yeah this lamb person's fully not um sharing their thoughts feelings and concerns with the earthworm person first off they're overworking themselves okay this is somebody who's really stressed they have a lot more responsibilities than they let on also their economic situation i feel like they're not telling the earthworm person about that either whether they're making a ton of money and they don't want the other person to know or they're making or the more likely outcome or the more likely scenario where they're not making that much and they don't want the earthworm person to know then we literally just have the world reversed which is the last of the major arcanas it represents the ending of one chapter the beginning of another so this can literally be like they're not fully healed from their past. They are healing from their past. They're on the healing journey, okay? So they're doing good, um, but they're not 100% sure if they're ready for something more serious right now. Now, I do feel like this person may open up in the future. I feel like they may be more open um, to something more serious in the future with the earthworm person, if that's what you guys want, but it might take some time. And that's really up to the earthworm of whether or not they're willing to wait. And honestly, I wouldn't blame the earthworm person if they're not willing to wait for that, because that's a pretty fair assessment. Like if you don't want to wait, don't wait. But this person needs more time to really let the other person in on who they are and just kind of heal, you know, 
so i don't know it's an unfortunate situation but there definitely needs to be more conversations if you feel like you're the earthworm person literally ask this person very direct questions such as oh like how much money you make if that's something that's socially acceptable for your relationship or like do you feel like you're ready for something more serious or you know are you like like i don't know just ask very direct questions and see how they respond because even if they're lying like if you're a good energy reader you can always tell when someone's lying so let's see the earthworm person's um romantic feelings here they have pay attention to the red flags oh my god guys okay <laughs> that would explain this is all coming together this is like i'm getting a very clear vision of this weird connection here this person is a lot more psychic and perceptive than this person and they are fully seeing the deception and the weirdness going on with the lamb person just not being completely 100 percent transparent and open with their feelings and who they are and that is a red flag that the earthworm is fully observing and you know they're getting onto the brink of like okay well this if this keeps going on like this if they like if there's no forward movement like girl i'm gonna have to break this connection off okay and if you're the lamb person you need to open up you need to be real because if you do not this is your future straight up like this earthworm person cannot be fooled they might be inexperienced they might be you know not that old but they can see the facade they can see the deception okay they might be younger but they understand what's going on here you know I, as somebody who has dated older people like i can tell you straight off the bat like age does not matter maturity level matters okay if you are inexperienced that don't mean nothing as long as you're a good person as long as you are intuitive and open-minded that's all that matters okay that's all you need in the connection as long as you're respectful willing to grow all that good stuff okay so if you're the earthworm person girl stop stop being self-conscious okay and pay attention to the red flags keep paying attention and you know what i wouldn't give this lamb person that much time either and no offense if you're the lamb person but like you need to be open and honest in order for a healthy connection um, to grow. And yes, they might be shy. Yes, they might feel like they need time to really open up or whatever. But okay, how much time are you going to give them? You know, if it's been like, if you've only known each other for like a few weeks or whatever, that's fine. But like, you know, if we're getting into the months territory, years and so on and so forth, and you still don't feel like you fully 100% know each other, like that's starting to become a problem. That is a red flag. And you know, I wouldn't blame... The earthworm person if they cut this off and so there might be some hostilities during your next meeting um but there doesn't have to be it's just more so <sighs> some healing needs to be done here okay this has been a stressful re <laughs> guys this is a messy situation that you got yourself into um i'm sorry that you've gotten yourself into that but Whew. yeah you guys so whoever is this lamb person they need to open up and if they can't open up then they're not ready for something serious which is why they're just living in the present moment so i mean if the earthworm person is cool with just like not having labels and living in the present moment um in this connection like then sure but i mean i also feel like the earthworm person has um a self-esteem <laughs> and you know has a quest they have goals in life and there's nothing wrong with that that's actually totally fine um and they don't they're not going to feel comfortable in this ambiguous um connection for super long so yeah something's gotta give that's what i'm gonna say there so i hope all of the advice that was given in this reading um will help you navigate uh this connection a little bit better i'm sorry if this wasn't the most positive reading um but you know sometimes you just need the tarot to be like listen linda you need to pay attention to the red flags your red flags and the other person's red flags and work on them together work through them and hopefully overcome them and become a successful soul connection but i mean if the other person in the connection can't overcome them that's kind of out of your control in which case you know you know then you might want to start asking a question okay should i move on i don't think you should make any rash decisions take your time with this and when you know you know you know and that's where i'll leave the reading <laughs> thank you guys for joining me sending you so much love and healing and remember if you need any help on any connection literally just ask the romance angels you have to ask them in order to get the help you want so ask the romance angel i'll ask for you in fact 
romance angels please help out everyone from group number four and navigate this tricky relationship um towards its highest potential its highest possibility whether that ends in a major spiritual lesson or a beautiful relationship thank you everyone for joining me subscribe hit that like button share with your friends comment this dynamic and what it looks like down below because i want to know what y'all are like okay thank you guys bye